Hi, I'm Jeff Bartles, Infrastructure Technical Specialist at Autodesk, and today we're going to be completing our series called Civil 3D Template Tips, Tricks, and Shortcuts. Throughout this session, we've been looking at several time-saving shortcuts that are applicable to Civil 3D template creation and styles. These shortcuts have been organized into two major categories, template settings and style creation. Throughout the presentation, I've been using a rapid-fire approach so we can get through as many concepts as possible. This recording represents the style creation tips and shortcuts, and it's part two of the overall session. I have just launched Civil 3D 2016, and I'd like to start by opening a drawing. I'm going to come up to the Quick Access Toolbar, and I'll launch the Open command, and I'll select this drawing called Points. This drawing was created using the default Civil 3D template, so all of these are stock styles. Let me zoom in on some of these points. The shortcuts that we're going to look at here are applicable to point objects. Let's start by pulling some of these point labels out into leaders. I'll select the point, I'll click this grip, and I'll pull out the label. I will then do that for a couple more points. I'll press Escape when finished. Notice that when you pull out a leader, the leader does not point back to the node or the insertion point of the point object. In fact, if I select the leader and drag this around the outside, you can see that leader follows an imaginary rectangle around that symbol. Maybe you would like the leader to point back to that node location. We can do that. At first, you may think that that property is associated with the label. It's not. It's associated with the point object. Let's find out what point style is being used. I'm going to hover over this point. I can see it's using the basic style. To edit that style, I'm going to go to the Settings tab, and then I'll open the Point category. I'll open Point Styles. Basic is right here. We can see it's in use. To edit the style, I'll right-click and I'll choose Edit. In the Point Style Editor, I will go down to the Summary tab, and then I'll click this button in the lower right corner to expand all of the categories. Right here, Leader Stops at Marker. Let me open that, and I'll change it to No. I will then come down and click OK, and we can see the difference on screen. Now, this is nice, but what if you'd like to make this change on a one-off basis? You only want to do it to one or two points. Well, we don't have to create a specific style. We can do this on a point-by-point -point basis. I'm going to come up and open the Undo menu. Let's back up a few steps. I'll do a quick regen to put things back the way they were. If you'd like to adjust the leader for individual point objects, select the point, and then come over to the Properties palette. Let me drag this down to the bottom. Down here you'll find a setting called Leader Attachment Option. I'll change this to Point, and I'll press Escape when finished. Let's start a new drawing. I'll do that by going to the Application menu, and I'll choose New. We'll create a new drawing from the default Civil 3D template. I'll click Open, and then I'm going to create some geometry on screen. I'll come up and launch the Polyline command. I'll start my polyline, and then we'll create a line segment 125 feet long. I'll just type 125 and press Enter. I'll press Escape. Let's pan this down, and then I'm going to launch the Copy command, and we'll create some copies of this object. The shortcuts that we look at here are going to be associated with linear labels, but the concept can work with virtually any label. Let's take a look at child label styles. I'm going to start by labeling this line. I'll do that by going to the Annotate tab. I'll come down and click this Price tag to bring up the Add Labels dialog box. Under Feature, I'll choose Line and Curve, Label Type, Single Segment, Line Label Style. Notice what we have here. We've got a lot of different label styles bearing only, distance only, bearing over distance. I'm going to choose bearing over distance in this case, and I'll click Add. I will then select the line to label it. I'll press Escape when finished. Let's zoom in. Before I create additional styles, let's make some edits to this one. One way I can edit the style is by going to the Settings tab. I can also edit it right here through this dialog box. Let me click the Edit button. I will then jump down to the Layout tab. This is where the label is built. If I open the Component menu, we can see this label is created from a couple of different components. I'm going to choose the Bearing component. That's the one I want to edit. I will then come down to the Contents field and click. I'll select the Ellipsis button. I will then select the programming code that represents that label, and then I'll come over here and adjust its properties. I don't like the Spaced option. Let me click in this field and I'll open the menu, and I'm going to choose Degrees, Minutes, Seconds without the spaces. I will then set the precision of this label to the even second. And then I'll come down under Direction. We'll change this to Short Name Spaced. This will put a space between the letters and the bearing. 
When finished, I'll click the arrow to overwrite the original code, and I'll click OK. We can see the difference here on screen. Before we jump out, let's edit this distance label as well. I'd like to drop this down to two decimal spaces. I'll do that by selecting the component. Under Contents, I'll click the ellipsis button. I'll select the code. We'll change its precision to two decimal spaces. We'll overwrite the original. I'll click OK, and I'll click OK. So this bearing over distance represents the base point for one of my labels. Now I'd like to create a variation called bearing only. Well, this label style includes the bearing. Let's create a variation or a child of this style. I'm going to start by closing this dialog box. Let's go to the settings tab and we'll find this style. Since it's a line style, we'll find it in the general category. Let me open label styles, line. There's bearing over distance right there. I'm going to right click on this style and I'll choose new. As you can see, I'm creating a child of this style or a variation. I'm going to call this one bearing only. And let me come down and click OK. Notice now the bearing over distance style contains a plus. Let me click that to expand it and we can see the child style right here. Let's edit the style because right now the child is the same as the parent. To edit the style, I'll right click on it and I'll choose edit. I will then go to the layout tab. Since the style represents bearing only, I'm going to choose the distance component and then I'll change its visibility property to false. I will then click OK. Let's create a child style that labels distance only. Once again, I'll select the parent. I'll right click and I'll choose new. This child style will be called distance only. I'll go to the layout tab. When I'm using the distance only style, I do not need to see the bearing component. So I'll set that to false and I'll click OK. So now I have one style doing the work of three. Let's label these next two lines with the new child styles. I'll go back to the annotate tab. I'll click the price tag. I want to label line and curve. I'll label bearing only. I'll click add and I'll select this line. I will then change the style to distance only. I'll click add and I'll select this line. When I'm finished, I'll press escape to get out of the command. Let's look at one more thing. The child styles can have children. Let's close this dialog box. Maybe I'd like to create a variation on distance only. I'll right click on it and I'll choose new. I'll call this one recorded versus measured. We'll go to the layout tab and in this variation I'm going to go to the distance component. I'll click in the contents field and then I'll click the ellipsis button. For this component I want more than just the label. I'm going to click in front of it and we'll add some text. I'll type rec colon and then a placeholder xxx.xx couple spaces and then I'll type measured colon space. I'll click OK and then I'll click OK and we can see the distance only now has its own child. Let's label this last line using the new child style. Add labels, line curve, we'll use recorded versus measured. I'll click add and then I'll click this line. I'll press escape when finished. At this point you may be wondering why create the child styles. I could get away with this just as easily by creating a bunch of separate styles. Yes we could. The place where the child styles come in handy is if your label styles need to change. For instance, after creating these maybe I realize they all have the wrong text height. Had I made these as separate styles I'd have to edit all four of them separately. In this case all I have to do is edit the parent and those properties will pass down to the children. For example, I'm going to select the parent style and I'll click edit. Then we'll change the text height for the bearing component to be 0.1. I'll press enter. I will then change the text height for the distance component to be 0.1. I'll press OK and OK and you can see that property is applied to all of the styles. Let's make one more change. I'll click edit on the parent. We'll go to the general tab and maybe I realized I placed these on the wrong layer. I'll click the ellipsis button. I'll choose one of these other layers and I'll click OK, OK, and you can see the change on screen. Once again, we looked at this parent-child relationship with line labels, but it works with virtually any Civil 3D label. I'm going to close this dialog box. Let's zoom out and I'd like to create an alignment. I'll go to the Home tab and let's create a polyline first. I'll launch the polyline command. I'll pick a couple points. Maybe we'll right click and we'll put some arcs in here to turn this into an alignment. Create alignment from objects and I'll select this one. I'll press enter a couple times. We'll call this Main Street. I'm going to go with the proposed style and then we'll take the default label style. I'll click OK. Let me zoom in on the end of the line. The shortcuts that we look at here are going to be associated with alignments, but same thing. 
These concepts will work with virtually any civil 3D style. Take a look at this major station label at the end, 6 plus 81. That is actually not correct. We can see the end of the alignment stationing right here, 6 plus 80.78. This label is actually rounding to the even foot. So what can we do? If I select this label, we can see that Civil 3D selects all of the major station labels. It's like I'm selecting a group. Let me zoom back in. I'll press Escape. If you want to make changes to a component in a group, hold your Control key and select the object. That will select that object only. Let me zoom in. At this point, I could make changes to it. I could press the Delete key and take it out if I want to, and only that label goes away. Let me click Undo. I'll hold my Control key and I'll select this label. From here, I could go to the Properties palette and I could change the style on this label only. I'll press Escape when finished. I'm going to hold the Control key and I'll select it again. We can also use these properties up here in the ribbon. I'll choose Flip Label to flip it to the other side. Let's also choose Edit Label Text. This shows me the programming code for this label only. I'll select it, and I'm going to change the precision for this label to two decimal spaces. I will then click the arrow to overwrite the original, and I'll click OK. When I'm finished, I'll press Escape to deselect. So I don't have to create a special major station label to two decimal spaces. If I want to do a one-off edit, I can select that individual label and use the Edit Label Text option. Now let's take the labels off of this alignment. I'll select the alignments. I'll go to Add Labels, and I'll choose Add Edit Station Labels. I'll choose Import Label Set, and we'll import the No Label Set, and I'll click OK. Let's put the labels back on. I'll go to Add Labels, Add Edit Station Labels, Import Label Sets, and we'll import the same label set we were using before. I'll click OK, and then I'll press Escape. So we're right back where we started. Let's look at an even better way to correct this precision issue for this last station label. I'd like to edit this station label style. I'm going to do that over here on the Settings tab. Let's find it. I'll close the general category, I'll open up alignment, I'll go to label styles, station, major station, parallel with tick, that's the one that's being used. I'm going to right click and edit this. I will then go to the layout tab. Notice that all of these label styles are built the exact same way. We'll go to the contents field, I'll click the ellipsis button. I will then select the programming code, and let's change the precision for all of these labels to be two decimal spaces. I will then pull the slider down, and I'll say, you know what, let's drop the decimal for whole numbers. I'll set that to yes. I'll click the arrow to overwrite the original code. I will then click OK. And then if I click and zoom in on the preview here, we can see how that applies two decimals to the last station only. I'll click OK and that also updates the drawing. Let's look at one more concept. I'm going to zoom out. Let's create another alignment. I'll click the Alignment button. I'll choose Alignment Creation Tools. We'll call this alignment Second Street. I'll press Enter. I will then click this button and I will draw my alignment. When finished, I'll close the toolbar. Let's zoom in. Let's say I'd like to label the alignment stationing for both alignments at this intersection. To do that, we'll create a new style. I'm going to go over to the Settings tab. We are still inside the Alignment category under Label Styles. Let's go to Station Offset. We can see that there's a couple styles in here currently. I'm going to make a brand new one. I'll do that by right-clicking on the category name, and I'll choose New. I'll call this style Station Intersection Label. I will then go to the Layout tab. As you can see, the default contains a single component. I'm going to click the red X. We'll take it out. We'll build this label style completely from scratch. Let's create a new text component. I'm going to call this Primary Station Label. We'll come down to Contents. Right now it just says Label Text. Let me click the Ellipsis button. I will select that generic label, and then we'll come over to Properties, and I'll choose what I want. Let's choose Alignment Name. I'll send that over. Maybe we'll put a dash after that. Let's open Properties, and I'll choose Station Value. Two decimal precision is fine. Let me send that over, and I'll click OK. If I click in this preview and roll the mouse wheel forward to zoom in, we can see that. In addition to the primary alignment station label, I'd like to label the station of the crossing alignment. To do that, I'll open the Component menu, and I'll choose Reference Text. 
Reference text allows you to label a similar object or a completely different object within the same label. I would like to label an alignment. I'll click OK. Let's name this component. I'll call it secondary alignment label. I would like to anchor it to my previous component. Anchor point will make that bottom left and then my attachment will make that top left. So I would like the top left of the new label to be aligned to the bottom left of the original label. Next we'll click in the contents field. I'll click the ellipsis button. We'll select this generic text. Since I used reference text alignment, if I open this menu, I can see a lot of properties associated with alignments. I'm going to choose alignment name. We'll send that over. We'll put a dash. I'll open the menu and I'll choose station value. I'll send that over. I will then click OK. Reference text will always show up as question marks in this preview. When finished, I'll click OK, and we'll try it out. I'm going to go back to Annotate. We'll click the price tag. I want to label an alignment. I want to use a station offset label style. We'll use this one we just created, station intersection label. Now, do we want a marker? That'll put a small marker at the intersection. In this case, I'm going to say no. Let me just drag this up and I'll choose none. I will then click Add. Civil 3D says Select Alignment. This would be the primary alignment. I'll click Main Street. This gives me a jig. It says what station do you want to label? I'm going to label the intersection of these two alignments. Finally, it says Select Alignment for Label Style Component called Secondary Alignment Label. That would be this alignment. When I'm finished, I'll press Escape. I can then select this label, and we can pull it out into a leader. Now that I'm finished, I will close this dialog box. It's important to note that this reference text concept will work with virtually any Civil 3D label. If you found this content helpful, please rate it by clicking the thumbs up icon. This will help other AKN users identify valuable content. On behalf of Autodesk, this is Jeff Bartle saying thank you for watching.